Welcome back, everybody, to more We're at War Constantly <laughs> with me, Daniel. Dan has fun. So we've just declared war on the Ottomans again. And at the end of the last episode, we planned our original first moves. And we'll keep progressing and see how we get on. The only place that might stink a little bit is here. They have a few more trade vessels than us. Although, they still have worse naval morale than us. Despite the fact we're not in a golden age anymore. And we just captured the Ottoman flagship. Where did that happen? We only took out one ship. Huh. It is a shame that when you take somebody's main ship that you don't keep the same bonuses, but I guess it's for balance purposes. I'm also kind of confused why you're out here. These two trade ships are not long for this world. It's fine. We'll just have to watch for when the Moroccan troops come over here. I'm not, they're not a priority right now. We will deal with that afterwards. For now, the Ottomans are our priority. And our, I guess our trade vessels, although it didn't move, everything else did. Yeah, there's our two trade ships out west. It's fine. We don't have enough naval limit yet to really get going there, so we'll just wait it out. Gotta sit in place while we wait for the Siege of Cahir to complete. And bye bye, 16 trade ships. We have a choice for our government. So we are up to what, tier 10 now, the electorate? So we could have the landholders option, which just gives us more manpower recovery speed. Pretty good. We can have citizenry, which gives us more morale. Also pretty good. The Board of Admirals where you trade Republican tradition for more absolutism, more naval fire, and more naval tradition. Which is okay. We can have military rulership, which does the exact same thing, but does it for land instead. Which again, is okay. Or we can have dynastic rule, which sacrifices a little bit of Republican tradition, but gives you more diplomatic reputation. This is also interesting because it completely changes how the re-election mechanic works. So you can have royal marriage. Uh, you would only have elections, though, when the ruler dies. So there's no improving a leader over time. And you can have consorts, which is meh. I'm not sure that I love any of those specialized ones. So really the question is, do we want more manpower or more morale? Given that we can't be in a golden age anymore, it's probably beneficial just to have more morale. Yes, it's a really boring choice, but I think it's the safe one. We can still bring Poland in, but I don't want to. We may eventually do so, but I don't want to do so yet. Because I want to make sure that this is all claimed first. Then we might just bring Poland in because we can. And if they're in this war, then they might not go for any other war. We're also at maximum favors with them, so can we just ask for some soldiers? Yes, thank you. Thank you for that 7,000 manpower. Very kind of you. I still don't see any Moroccan troops yet, so I guess for the time being... We'll just siege this little area out, just so they can't spawn troops there. We could also use our transports to potentially siege out Kibris. But I'm worried I might leave myself a little bit short. There's a stack of their troops. Um, Just stay in place for now. I guess we can probably get away with it. That was quick. I guess we'll do that too and just smack that stack down. Three and two. So you will siege quicker. So that, let's there might, we might as well. We might as well. There's their 100 ships. Ah, uh, their stack is escaping. Which it shouldn't be able to do. Maybe I have to be in this sea zone to prevent that from happening. I'm, not, I'm really not sure. No, they can just seem to do it anyway. It's fine. 
It doesn't make sense. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Actually, let's go up here first. Eh, uh, I can't. Okay, let's not do that then. Let's not do the thing I just said. Have that happen. Get that sieged. It's worth an annoying amount of war score considering how out of the way it is. So let's get it out of the way. Let's get it dealt with. 40k stack. You can sit there, but you can't get that far. So I guess for now, we'll just split this up a bit. 10. 10. And then these two fives are going to start autonomously sieging. Can't siege that yet. We will have to deal with that afterwards. Do that. Yeah, the two 5k stacks are just going to be automated. And this 10k stack... So level 6 for... So I guess we'll have 20,000 troops go over there. Which ones aren't being automated? We'll wait. <laughs> I've clicked too many buttons. I want to see what they do. Yeah, you should be too scared to engage the enemy. That's why they're in such small stacks. Okay, so this one's finally dealt with. But we can now start breaking out. So our 26,000 stack can come up here. Our 36,000 stack is going to follow it just to keep it safe. That's fine. Yeah, these two stacks together should keep all of this pretty protected. Okay, so that's the 10,000 that's just going to sit there. So these guys can come over here. And we'll slowly start sieging this out. I'm not worried about it being attacked by any other nations. It's just in, in the background. We might as well get it done. Constantinople is finally sieged out. So before we cross over, because there's a straight penalty here. You have a fort here? No. What a mistake that is. And you just suicided your one galley. Good effort. These guys are going to cross over. And we're going to combine those together. Who is this leader? 6201. Congratulations, you're coming over here. 6201. It's only got one point of siege, but that's better than nothing. Election time! Oh no, our guy died. As I said last episode, I was going to be like, oh, we're finally going to be able to make an election decision with a pretty much 100% Republican tradition. Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. How old was he? Oh, he was 65, to be fair. So he's died. Our beloved relative is a 163. Is he worth it? Yeah, probably. 163 is not exactly the layout of stats that I would want. We don't need Diplo points right now to anywhere near that degree. So we'll probably flip to admin priority. I think makes the most sense there. He's 46, which is pretty average for a... You've just been got out of a diplomatic-ish election. Uh, Tolan's not a bad stat. Yeah, that's a pretty good trait. Because it means as we're converting other provinces to the right religion, they're going to be mildly less perturbed. So, I'm okay with that. That's not a bad outcome. Have we seen any other troops down here yet? No, Morocco still doesn't seem to have moved anything our way, which I am A-OK -okay with. There's their 37,000 stack, so we can move our 30... We can move our 30 over here, kept missing the button. And when this gets sieged, they'll force their navy to come out and play. They do have a lot of galleys. Not quite as many as us, though. They have a lot of transport ships in that fleet. And at this point, I can bring Poland in. I think. 
I'm still going to wait, just in case. I'm going to get this sieged out first, and then I'll call them in. I just don't want to run the risk of them starting to claim things that I want, and they just vehemently refuse to give it up, because you can't force the AI to give it up. You should be able to, but you can't. They just stubbornly hold on to it. <laughs> so there's like, no, this is mine. They don't have enough troops over here, eh? How many do you need? 2,000 more. Isn't that annoying? Okay. Get a couple of cannons and take them over there, I guess. That's fine. Russia is being rude to us on a trading level. We'll just ignore them. Okay. That's what I wanted to see. So you guys are going to pincer. A... Yes, it's in the woods. It's not perfect, but it's not that bad. Uh, you can come over here. This stack can now start to move over. That's just a naval fleet, so we don't really mind. Uh, just in case I get caught with my pants down, I'm going to move you to Kef, because then I'll get a terrain bonus against Morocco if I don't notice. Here's the big naval fight. They do slightly outnumber us, but we have more morale, slightly more combat width, and more of the ships that you would want for this type of fight whereas yeah they just shredded 10 galleys and that's it where are they gonna flee to they should flee here in theory yes they did and as we are now completing that fight they didn't really get crushed the way i was hoping they would but that's okay start moving over here We should start sieging this immediately, and then it'll pop their forces back out. And we're healing while we're out here. Yeah, it is... It's very strange to me, and this isn't even the first time we captured one of the Ottoman flagships. You still get to see that it was their flagship. But I don't think they have any better stats than anything else. No, they don't. So that you can still see they're the flagship. But they just become a regular ship. It's really kind of disappointing. And I don't know what happens in terms... I've never had an event fire where you've taken a flagship of another nation and then they manage to sink their own flagship or even capture it back. I don't know what happens. If anybody does know if anything happens, let me know. Well, I know nothing happens and that's why I've never noticed it. But Who knows? I guess we should move this back, too. So you were going over to Kef. Do we have another province nearby? There we do. That's also in hills. Just a bit of a natural buffer. Speaking of getting buffer, or buffeted. Good job these aren't to scale. Think how terrifying that would be. <laughs> Look at those ships. Captured four of them. Two of them transports, we don't really care. A couple of them are galleys, which is a little bit more useful. Uh, these two transports... You can probably join the group there without getting wrecked, I would say. Oh, this siege is done too, so we can just... Have all this move over, and then once they've all come back together, we will move this stack probably over to Icel, I would say. It's probably quite safe. Probably not how that's pronounced, but that's just the story of this game. I don't know how to pronounce anything. <laughs> so, my apologies. Should be able to smack those five ships down. We'll go over to the Gulf of Satalia. Very poetic name. And yep, they were all smacked. We didn't capture any of them. It's okay. Gascony is sat with us here, so we don't technically need to get the two more cannons, but more cannons equals more good. I know. High stakes baths. Probably go to sign OP without wrecking ourselves. Hopefully. Uh, no, combine. Thank you. And then we're going to just go straight over the Gulf of Cyprus. And we have a big load of ships now sat here now you're on automation so you will come over here naturally okay that's what i wanted to check i guess that means we can go sit our main fleet over there again 
Still sieging. You're moving back. Just doing a little bit of sweeping up. Make sure we haven't missed anybody obvious. Nope. We all look handy dandy. Uh, Austria is getting, yep, yeah, pretty soundly wrecked as we expected by the Bavarians. It's very pretty, that blue on white. I like it. I don't like that we had a general that just died, though. Go take a look. At recruiting a new one. Alcenzo. Parzagli. Parzagli? Par no, there's no A in there. Okay. Fine. Good leader, either way. There's the Moroccan troops. I'm glad I checked. I just caught them in the corner of my eye. We should still be quite safe to wander over there, so we'll slowly go that way. They still have about 50,000 troops. Most of them are here. Not quite all of them, but most of them. Al Karak has finally sieged out. So we can move over to Shem. I'm not comfortable enough at this point to start splitting this stack and have it siege out everything, because I don't really know where their units are over here. But we're still going to stay in pretty big chunks. Doesn't mean we have more attrition, but it's definitely a lot safer. Same with this stack. I'd love to split up and just start sieging everything, but we have no idea where a lot of their troops are. And they still have... I mean, they have 111,000 troops now, so they have a lot more than they even had at the start of this. So, need to keep our eyes distinctly peeled and also move our fleet back as well so 60 trade ships where do I want to put you that you don't get wrecked I'm just going to put you over in Messina I don't think the Isle of Sicily is going to be of any contention should be good there still got our siege there's our two cannons let's get them combined in to speed that siege up That's just a 1,000 stack. That's fine. Where are all of their troops? I'm seeking their troops. Where on earth are all of their troops? That's a 33k stack. Uh, they're going to arrive before us, so we will wait and let our two stacks consolidate. Or let's get a little bit closer. There are some Ottoman troops. Only 24,000 of them. Not that worried. Still carpet sieging. That's perfectly fine. 42,000 all together. On the 10th, there'll be one province away from one another. We want these two stacks to go in very close formation. Icel has also been sieged, so let's go nearby with this group as well. Really consolidate these things together. They should be close enough now that if we squabble, should be safe. But why take the risk? We're in no rush down there. I guess we can also add the autonomous sieging. Maybe this area for the time being. We'll have to watch because they do have some troops coming this way. Is that a highland? It is. We should be able to snag them before they get back into this heart, the heart of their territory. Let's also merge you, so I don't forget. All right. On the 20th, they're going to combine like that. Give it a day. And we're going to go in together. Yep, they're going to show up on the same day. We're going to get a smidge of attrition here because this province is just... Just not coin the mustard, but it's safer. Probably not safer for those few guys that kick the bucket while we wait to consolidate, but we'll, we'll just pretend. We'll just ignore that. <laughs> we'll, we'll just pretend that that didn't happen. And smack Go over here, please. Fresh conversion of Valdech. Again, probably not how that's pronounced, but it's fine. Do we want to bring Poland in yet? Do we even need to? They do have a thick end of 100,000 troops. 
It, and it would say it was having to come over. Sure, why not? They're our friends. Let's give them some spoils. Definitely don't need them, but it just makes it makes it cleaner. Sinope has been sieged out. Let's go down to Diakabia. They do fractionally outnumber us in this battle, but our military leader is miles better, and their morale is rubbish. They have really high tactics, though. Where's that coming from? They have 119% discipline. That is very impressive. We uh, we definitely don't have that. We have 109%. But they're almost all infantry. So they have a really wide front... Well, they had a really wide front line until they started to fall apart. But they have pretty much nothing in the back. So we were getting flanked, but they were getting shot by cannons constantly. Oh, probably, probably balances out, I would say. There's another stack of 33,000 troops, too. Where are they going? Urfa? They will slightly outnumber us there, too, but not by a huge quantity. Yeah, they're just... Their really poor morale means, yes, they might inflict some painful losses on us, but they'll never be able to win a battle. And we're still inflicting significantly more losses on them anyway. And we're beating up Morocco pretty comprehensively. We lose 5,600 troops, they lose about 19,000. One of our stacks stay in de-siege that, the other one can go over to Mechnez, because we clearly have the way of getting through here, because otherwise how did Morocco get that side? It probably would have made more sense for them to get open borders with air and then just come through this gap. Even if they got attacked by the natives there both times, it's only 3,000 troops and they would be miles behind in terms of technology. A guarantee. How many troops do the Ottomans have now? They still have 85,000. So we're still not safe to start carpet sieging, so we're not going to. I'm not sure why this didn't get did i just not put it in the group by accident he's moving oh okay gaskin is gonna do it anyway that's fine and we don't have enough troops over here again why why did gaskin leave it's fine they can't produce any troops while we're sat there so i'm not that worried about it we'll get there eventually Changing patterns of consumption. So the price of sugar gone up by 50%. Because yes, sugar was once a rare luxury that had to be imported from the Maghreb. Uh, but as the world's opened up and the purchasing power of our urban class has increased, sugar may still be considered a luxury, but quite an affordable one. I guess it's all relative. Where's this stat going? Okay, it's going south. Gonna have to keep a very close eye on that. Because they're probably gonna move to something in this area. And then we're gonna have to go back and re-siege. And I don't want to get backstabbed and not notice. Basinja. This stack is going to come over here and just protect the area for now. I don't really care if Poland claims this area. Because we're not going for northern Turkey in this war. We just don't have the capacity for that. We don't want to be overextended. We've been fairly lucky so far in this game when it comes to overextension. We've not really run into any enormous issues. But I don't intend to try and find them. <laughs> so we're not going to go out and seek the terrible events, put it that way. Also, why did Gascony finally decide that they were going to just... What are you doing? Take the province out that you were going to. If I flag it, will you do it? Go here. Take thing. There is a stack that ran away over here, so we want to bat that before we get our mini sieging stacks wrecked. It would be really nice if Poland went over there, and it looks like they now are, but it took them a while. We're going to go over there as a precaution. Again, don't trust the AI to do anything. I wouldn't even trust it to scramble an egg.
That's an interesting route. We are definitely not going that way. Do we have a way of getting to Biapas yet without taking the world's most enormous route? No. Why? Why we do? Why? Why do you do the things that you do? <laughs> Come over here. Yes, I want to take a fourteen thousand mile route, please. We definitely don't need to call Portugal in on this. Uh, they are near the maximum favor cap, though. So we're going to trade our favors for trust. That should reduce the odds of them ever breaking an alliance with us. We might even do it a couple more times while this war's going on. If there's anything about how I played this game, I am highly trustworthy. Oh, Poland is going to go and smack this stack. Well, that's fine. We're still going to join in. Help them out. Remember, we're friends, right? We're all friends. We have to wait until the 20th of February before we can do another increase in trust, which is a shame. There are the rebels that we were expecting in Tyrol. We shouldn't get any more of them after this. Get our royal marriage done. I really wish there was a way that you could choose how many favors you wanted to put in and increase the trust by a certain amount in one engagement. It would just save a lot of time. Also have this stat come over now. I didn't want to get unnecessary attrition, and this is a level 7 fort in a mountain, so that's pretty spicy. Wait for a day here. Go to trust. Dinjar has been sieged out. Let's go down to Shat, <laughs> which is a uh, borderline demonetize, but I'm not monetized anyway, so it's a moot point. <laughs> at least not at this point. And we are cleaning house. Austria's surprisingly hanging on for a, a lot more than I thought they would be. They're only at minus 65 war score. I thought they would just get just straight demolished. They still have troops too. What is Bavaria doing? Again, don't trust the AI to even scramble an egg. They just aren't capable a lot of the time. Certain things the AI is pretty good at. War management doesn't tend to be one of them. And we've captured three more ships. Hooray! Yet another transport that I probably don't need. But will not get rid of because I'm kind of a hoarder that way. Where's their fleet retreating? You probably, if they're smart, they'll retreat to Creek. It's a pain for me to deal with it there. Yeah, they, they must be. Well, that or they're going to maybe gather. Maybe they'll go down here. Who knows? Who knows what the AI will do? Mysterious things. I think we can probably start carpet sieging down here, though. I'll take a stack down there and break them apart once, once I'm there, just in case. Usman Nabet, one of our advisors, has published the crowning achievement of his literary career, The Spirit of Laws. This monumental work has been celebrated for three of its numerous theories. The classification of governments, the influence on politics, and the most important one, the theory of the separation of powers. This event can happen if you have a, a high-ranking individual in control of your monarch point accumulation. You can either get 50 prestige, which doesn't do the turns it into monarch point bits when it carries over, otherwise this would be a fantastic option, and you get cheaper admin tech for six years which is a very random length of time uh, or you can just gain a stability which we're clearly going to do plus one stability is a winner winner chicken dinner and yes they did they did flee to Crete that's a pain for me to deal with so I'm just going to leave them alone for now or I'm just going to sit outside the territory just so they can't escape 22,000 stack. There is the Biapas stack, which is still dangerous by itself. Eh, uh, there's still a pretty big stack. Maybe we won't backtrack and just carpet siege yet, then, I guess. 
Because they still have enough troops collectively here to be a problem. We should probably move a stack down there to protect the siege. That's what we'll do. Although, that was so quick, the siege is already done. Where are you going, Al Alfaz? We'll take that 4,000 stack out and just clean it up. Yeah, so their stack's coming this way, so they're probably going to come and... De try, at least try and de-siege everything down here. So we're going to go sit on this mountain then. Then this stack will come over and join. Done and done. Morocco hasn't tried to come back. Nope, there's their stack. We are attritioning, but it's fine. If we wanted to, we could have Portugal join the war and just beat up Morocco. But I don't think Morocco is a big enough... You know, it's tempting. Now I think about it. Tell you what. Sure. We don't need you to join, but you'll probably make life a bit easier. And we're not trying to claim any of this right now. No, again, not a priority. Nothing needs upgrading? Nope. No ship that needs upgrading, which is fantastic. We'll just take the prestige hit because we're just going to make a seemingly infinite amount of it. And then this stack is going to come over and help protect the kind of northern Egyptian, Syrian, Lebanese area of the world. And this stack is going to come and do the same thing. I'm going to wait until I've left the territory, though, because I don't want to get black flagged. And then we can piece these guys out. They don't have any troops. They're just in the way. Carpet sieging is now happening. Poland is very confident. They only have 1,000 in each stack. I don't... It's really efficient to do that in terms of manpower, but it's very scary to do. I was kind of hoping you'd come and siege this out, but... I'll take a stack over just in case you don't. Again, can't trust the AI. <laughs> but they had one job and they have failed. Uh, we also are pretty close to our military cap again. Is there anything we can even spend it on other than just development right now? Strengthening your government does spend military power and you get absolutism and republican tradition i've never really felt the need to do it in this game especially considering as a republic our absolutism cap is 39 right now because yeah you get a minus 40 on that by being a republic and we could start going through and taking rights away from the pastors and the burghers, but I don't really feel the need. We're doing really well. Like, we have massive reform progress growth because we have so much land. We're getting plus 15 maximum absolutism from this anyway. Like, I don't really feel the need, so I guess we'll just do some more developing. And again, we'll start with numbers that aren't round. One, two, three, four... One, two, three. And one, one, two, one. And we're going to end up with too much of the other points as well, especially diplomacy. So let's see if we have anything here that needs rounding as well. That's a really weird development level. It, it's because of the gold. It, it kind of breaks the formula a bit. But if I do that, for example, it's still not an even number. It's not an integer. You don't want this to get too high, though, because the higher you make your development in gold. I think we already had one this game. It actually has a chance of depleting and halving. So we'll, we'll, we'll try not to do that. Uh, this can go one, two, three, and technically we'll have to do four there. We want that to be a round number. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And four. We can do a fifth there. All right, that should be enough spending up us. We want to keep admin points for right now because we want to be able to call things. And at admin level 22, we can get a new idea group. We don't want to burn all of our points. But that actually gives a lot more manpower cap. Yeah, 241,000 is now our manpower cap. We're still not at total war mode. I mean, this is terrifying. But we're getting pretty close. It's also nice we have a 100 power projection too. That's partly why our troops are so good. And we end up making so much money from trade. Like, power projection's absolutely fantastic. You, you never have enough. So you always want to be at 100. 
45k stack from Biapas. How is such a small nation producing so many troops? What's the development? 37, oh my word, 37, 32, 66 development. <laughs> 66. Wow, that is... That's because really how spoiler that is a staggering amount of development. I'm impressed. Good for them. That's what happens when you build tall, not wide. Good on the AI. It doesn't always spend its monarch points very effectively, but that is pretty neat. Unlike what Poland is doing, which is just sitting on its bum carpet sieging an area that they don't need to carpet siege. Yeah, sieging this out is going to be a nightmare. Oh well, I guess we'll start doing it. The yeah, Appass has decided it just wants to park over here, I guess. To the point where I'm almost tempted. I don't know where the, where the Ottoman troops have gone, but you suspect they're here somewhere. I wonder if we can go and find them. Oh, we finally took that one province by itself out. I guess just in case they know with a load of troops over there, I'll send a stack over to Crimea as a precaution. We're already at 72% war score, though. If we peace out at Koinu, we'll technically get a slightly lower amount, but I think it's fine. We're not vassaling them. There's really no use for doing so. We'll just take their money. Yeah, we dropped 1% on the war score. We have no debate. Oh no, our people aren't talking about anything. Finally, it's tempting to do culture conversion costs cheaper, but not right now. Uh, we want less land attrition. So, quite it's more than a bribe giving somebody 657 gold. But anybody that's got a bribe request, we will do because we have pretty much unlimited money. Uh, we don't really want to do scapegoat. Taking sides in Parliament will also be fine because it just costs prestige. I don't really want to support populists. I will ignore corruption. We're definitely not promoting meritocracy. That is absolutely not happening. Paying Republican tradition is not the best, but it's fine. It's 18 points if we're doing military support. Might just do one for the admin and a couple for military. Again, I don't want to lose army professionalism. I don't want to lose government reform. And I definitely don't want to lose meritocracy. But I think what we'll do is we'll just sit. This is almost certainly going to win. I don't need it imminently, and they're debating, so I'm not going to get a, you know, a penalty from doing that. So I think it'll be fine. Speaking of fine, this war's going fine. But I think we'll end up tidying it up next episode. So hopefully you'll stick around and we'll see what we want to carve out of them. Like freshly carved Christmas turkey. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Appreciate your time. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye now. Thank you for watching the video. And if you'd like to see more, feel free to stick around.